Hey there, Twisters. So today we're going to talk about 10 breakout centers for the upcoming 2022-23 NHL season. So when I say breakout, I mean these are players who maybe have spent a couple years in the NHL, they're ready to take the next step forward and maybe become a household name among hockey fans out there. Or these could be players who maybe had that breakout already and a few seasons have passed and they're ready to kind of see a resurgence in their career, a bit of a renaissance season. So I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Who is due for a breakout season among centers? And who is due for a regression? And just a couple of criteria with my lists. So with breakout performances, this does omit rookies because they are just getting their feet wet in the NHL or they've played a few games and are still just kind of coming into their elements. So we're talking about like Marco Rossi, Mason McTavish, Matty Beneers, he played 10 games last year, even Quentin Byfield, right? He needs a little bit more opportunity until we can gauge whether or not he'll break out. He's still kind of buried in the depth chart. And this is pretty much all offensive, right? Because when we're talking about household names, these are players who light the lamp or make pretty plays out there. So without further ado, let's get into this and kicking off my list from the Ottawa Senators, I have Tim Stutzla. Even though I haven't ranked these players in a particular order, Stutzla is the most exciting on this list, at least I think so. There are a couple of reasons why. First of all, he's an RFA at the end of the season, and so he's likely to have the best of his career so far. And second of all, the line mates around him. So you look at the offseason additions, you've got, of course, Alex Dabrinkit in addition to Claude Giroux. And even if Stutzla doesn't play with them, he still has great talents around him like Brady Kachuk and Drake Batherson. So this past season, in 79 games, he had 22 goals and 36 assists for 58 points. I don't know if he'll quite get to a point per game this upcoming year, but with those guys I just mentioned, I have no reason, there's no reason in my opinion as to why he can't be around at least like 75 points. So I expect a monster season from him and a really exciting season for the Ottawa Senators as a whole. Second on my list is from the New Jersey Devils and you saw him in the thumbnail. It is Jack Hughes. He was over a point per game player last season. He only played 49 games though. So watch this guy over the course of 82 full games, knock on wood that he's healthy, of course. 49 games, 26 goals, and 30 assists for 56 points. You would imagine that he'd play alongside Jesper Bratt, who of course was extended in the offseason, in addition to newly acquired Andre Palat. And as we saw in the playoffs, he was maybe their best forward through the course of the playoffs and really can help drive play offensively. So I expect a huge season from Jack Hughes. He should at least be a point-per-game player this upcoming season. And the Devils will be a lot more interesting to watch too. Third on my list is another player from a team that I'll have my eyes on quite a bit this upcoming season, just like Ottawa and New Jersey. And from the Columbus Blue Jackets, it's Boone Jenner. Now, Jenner is 29 years old. He's a lot more experienced than the first two players I mentioned here. He has scored 30 goals in the past as well, but I think that this could be a potential career year for him. For the time being, the Jackets are actually kind of thin at center. Yeah, they have absolute talents in the likes of Kent Johnson and Cole Sillinger, and Jack Roslevic is still probably going to get better in his career as well. But for now, I think that 1C should be Boone Jenner's. And when you look at the teammates around him, yeah, this should be really exciting for the Columbus Blue Jackets captain because not only could he be playing with Patrick Laine, who was a point-per-game player this up uh, this last season, but also now Johnny Gaudreau, who had a Hart Trophy caliber season for the Flames, has come over in free agency. So this line should be a lot of fun to watch. And Jenner, even though he might be the weakest link offensively, I still think that he could be, you know, flirting with like 65 or 70 points. My number four breakout center is Jesperi Kokaniemi with the Carolina Hurricanes. A huge reason why is because Vincent Trocek left in free agency for the Rangers. And so now KK, for the time being at least, is penciled in at that two center spot. Now some of you out there might say, well, Martin Natchez could possibly fill that void. He still has to sign with the team. You also have Jack Drury, a uh, young player who should see some ice time this year. Jordan Stahl is the third line center. He could also move up in, if need be. But for now, KK has an opportunity and some great line mates around him potentially with the likes of Svechnikov and Tevo Teravainen, or possibly you could always move down uh, Max Pacioretty in place of one of those two I just mentioned there. This past season, 66 games, 12 goals, and 17 assists for 29 points, but that was just with 12 minutes of time on ice per game. So I expect an increased role for Kokaniemi. I expect some better production, and the line mates definitely have a, uh, are playing a factor here as well. For number five, kind of like I mentioned with Boone Jenner, I've selected another player who is a little bit more seasoned, but he, I think, has more to give this upcoming year, and that is Bo Horvat. I really think that this is a perfect storm for him and his teammates on the Canucks. One reason is because, yes, it is a contract year for Bo, 27 years old. These are going to be the best years of his career. He just had 31 goals this past season. 
You look at the talent around him, right? Tanner Pearson, uh, JT Miller, Brock Besser. You could even add in somebody like Kuzmenko or Pod Colson. And I looked at a couple of articles out there from Nux Misconduct and Fan Sided. And actually, Horvat was dropped down as the third line center. So I don't know if they plan to roll with Miller and Pedersen as your one two down the middle, which would relegate Horvat to the third C. But I still think he could have a really good season in that sort of role. Nonetheless, they could always end up stacking things in their top six. And when you look at the Canucks, I think they have extra motivation this upcoming season. They are playing again under Bruce Boudreau, who came in and had a huge impact on the team. So I think that a lot of things will align correctly for the Canucks, especially for their captain in Bo Horvat. Next up on my list is Alex Newhook from the Colorado Avalanche. Now he did play throughout the playoffs, but I didn't really notice him all that much out there. Nonetheless, I'm sure a lot of Avs fans will say that he made some good strides this past season. 71 games, 13 goals, and 20 assists for 33 points, still needs to work on his face-offs. And I think one thing that would really help him, even as a third-line center, is if he had somebody like Evan Rodriguez or Sonny Milano join in free agency. The Avalanche still have a little bit of cap space to play with if they want to add some scoring punch in their third line. Second line, I think that's still JT Comfers. He'll kind of replace Nazem Kadri for this upcoming year. And ultimately, maybe that will be where Alex Newhook fits on the Avalanche. Next up from the Seattle Kraken, I've selected Yanni Gord. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if he plays 1C or if Matty Beneers actually wins that job in camp. But either way, I think that Gord has more to give offensively. Seattle this past season didn't really have that much success scoring, but Gord still produced a little bit in 74 games, 21 goals, and 27 assists for 48 points. A lot of that was with Jared McCann, and I expect the two to play this upcoming season and who knows maybe Jordan Eberle could join them or Andre Burakovsky who just had a career year with the Avalanche. Gord's a very versatile player. I've always liked him. He had upwards of 64 points with the Tampa Bay Lightning a few years ago. I don't expect him to get back to that point but I think that he could be around 58 maybe even 60 points this upcoming season if Burakovsky can kind of find that touch from the regular season last year. My next breakout center is from the Arizona Coyotes, and it's Barrett Hayton. This past season was his first full season with the organization. He had 60 games under his belt then, 10 goals and 14 assists for 24 points, 19 of which were even strength. But I assume that his role is going to increase a whole lot with the Coyotes this next year because the team is so incredibly thin at center. In fact, Hayton is supposed to play 1C, at least projected there, with Nick Schmaltz and Clayton Keller, who are very good top six teammates for him. Really with the Coyotes, I think the only way that Hayton wouldn't win that job in training camp is if somehow Dylan Gunther, who hasn't even played an NHL game, just wows everybody and somehow finds his way to the top of the lineup. But even so, Hayton, he's got a lot to build on. He'll have good opportunity out there. And so uh, we'll see if he can be close to an 18 or 20 goal scorer this upcoming season. Next on my list is kind of a young star in the NHL who's kind of already found his way. But I think that this full 82 game season will really benefit him. And that's Nick Suzuki of the Canadiens. Certainly developed some chemistry out there with Cole Caulfield. It'll be interesting to see if Uri Slavkovsky actually slides to that top line to play with those two, or if somebody like Evgeny Dodonov or a veteran like Mike Hoffman would step in as well. But even so, Suzuki will benefit from a full year of Martin St. Louis because St. Louis came in with 37 games left and Suzuki was nearly a point per game player. He had 12 goals and 22 assists in that span. So I think he's got plenty to build on. He's got great young talent around him and a coach who is able to maximize that as well. At least that's what we saw last year and hopefully for the foreseeable future. And last on this list from the Buffalo Sabres, I've selected Dylan Cousins. Now Casey Middlestack could have been one of the players or Peyton Krebs if he's playing center throughout the year. So I'm not entirely sure if it will play or pan out this way. But Dylan Cousins as maybe a third line center, you look at the good depth at wing for the Buffalo Sabres with players like Victor Olafson and also Alex Tuck. Yeah, maybe those guys play on the top line, but you still have Rasmus Asplund, who has flashes of brilliance out there. You have Jack Quinn, who is just getting into the NHL as well. So I think that Cousins could build on his successes last year. A little inconsistent, yes, but that is pretty par for the course, especially for a young center versus a, a winger. But even so, 79 games played, 13 goals and 25 assists for 38 points. Even though he was... Uh, struggling to contribute as the season progressed. The Sabres got better, so maybe there's an opportunity for him to be a part of that equation as things go forward. But of course, Sabres fans, let me know in the comments below how you expect that depth chart to project. Anyway, guys, those are my 10 breakout centers to look for this upcoming NHL season. 
who are yours do you expect anybody to regress make sure you sound off in the comments down below and stick around for more content just like this throughout the offseason with previews predictions all that good stuff in the meantime follow me on social media i'm on twitter and on instagram hit the thumbs up that helps others like you discover our channel subscribe if you're new here and stick around for more rocking content stay notified to click that bell anyway thank you twisters so much for tuning in once again i'm nick i'll catch you later ciao